We use CLIs or command line interfaces a lot. Sometimes we use them for work, like NPM, and sometimes they're just for fun, like piping Fortune into Calce into Lolcat. In this video, you'll learn how to make your own CLI with Node.js based on a blog post written by Dominic Kundal over on the Twilio blog. Let's start by getting our project set up over in the terminal. We'll start by creating a new folder for our project called create-project. This is common formatting for CLIs on NPM. They usually start with create-project and we'll run npm init dash dash yes to initialize our npm project. Then I'll open it up in Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever editor you want, but I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. And then inside of our project, I'm going to create a source directory and also a bin directory. And then inside of the source folder, I'm going to create a cli.js file. And inside of the bin folder, I'm going to create a create-project file as well. Then we'll open up the cli.js file inside of the source folder. And inside of here, we're going to export a function called cli that takes in some arguments. And we'll just console.log the arguments out. Next, we'll head to that create project file inside of bin. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a script inside of node that requires the ESM module. This allows us to use ES modules without needing to transpile for different Node.js versions that might not have that support. And once we've required that here, we'll, we will call the CLI function from inside of CLI.js. We'll pass in process.argv, which is an array of all the arguments that were passed into this script from the command line. Then we'll use npm to install the ESM module. And we'll head over to our package.json to update some values for our project. Namely, we are going to update the name. This is going to be at Brent Schooley slash create dash project. You should make this your NPM name. We'll update the description to say a CLI to bootstrap my new project since that's what we're building here. Down inside of main, we'll change this to point at source slash index.js. Inside of the bin section, we're gonna have two entries here. One is going to point at at your NPM username slash create dash project. And that's gonna to refer to bin slash create dash project. And the other entry is going to be create dash project, which also points at bin slash create dash project. These are just two different ways to execute the same NPM package. Then under publish config, we're gonna set access to public. And then one last thing in our package.json file, we're gonna set a couple keywords. One of them will be CLI and the other one is create dash project. Next, inside of the terminal, we'll use npm link to create a sim link to our code so that we can just test it out by running create dash project. And I'll do that, I'll run create dash project and I'll specify dash dash yes. And we'll see that there's three arguments passed in that we've logged out via the console.log. I'll try it again with just create project and there's only two arguments. And then one more time with create dash project dash dash yes dash dash git. And we have four arguments. Now that we have the arguments, let's talk about how we're going to process them. The arguments our CLI will support is a template, either JavaScript or TypeScript, whether you want to run a git initialize and whether you want to install the dependencies from NPM. So we're gonna use a few packages here to help us out. One of them is Inquirer, which will allow us to ask questions for the missing options, and Arg, which will help process arguments into options. So we'll import Arg from Arg, and then we'll create a function here called parse arguments into options. This takes the raw arguments that came in from the command line and will process them out into options. So what we're specifying here in this object are the arguments that we're expecting to see. So we have dash dash git, dash dash yes, and dash dash install and their corresponding aliases. Finally, the second object that we pass in are the arguments that we want arg to use, and those start at the third argument out of the raw args. So the first one is the create project, the second one is the template. So starting at three, we're looking for these dash dash git dash dash yes or dash dash install. And out of here, we'll return some options in an object. So skip prompts will correspond to if the person put dash dash yes. Git will correspond to if they specified dash dash git. Template is actually that first argument they passed in, so that'll be in args dot underscore sub zero. And then run install option will be args if they passed in dash dash install, otherwise it's false. Next we'll head down into our CLI function 
and we'll instead process these options. So we'll let options equal parse arguments into options, passing in the args that were passed in from the command line, and then console.log out the options instead of the args. Let's head to the terminal, give this a test. We'll run create dash project dash dash yes, and you'll see skip prompts set to true. And if we run create dash project and specify CLI, it'll set CLI as the template. Next, let's prompt the user for any missing items that they didn't pass in on the command line. To do that, we're gonna create an async function called prompt for missing options that passes in the options that we've collected so far. The first thing we'll do in here is specify a default template of JavaScript. Next, the first option that we want to check is skip prompts because we don't wanna prompt them for anything if they don't wanna be prompted. So we'll check to see if they've specified skip prompts. If they have, then we'll take the options we have so far and we'll set the template equal to either the template that they have specified in the options.template or the default template of JavaScript if they didn't specify one on the command line. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our list of questions so we can help the user fill in the missing parameters. The first thing we're gonna check for is the template. So if they haven't specified a template, then we wanna create a question to ask them which template to use. So first we're gonna push a question on, it's going to be a list type. So we're gonna give them a couple options they can pick from. The name is going to be template and the message is going to say, please choose which project template to use. And the choices that they'll have are JavaScript or TypeScript. And the default choice as we specified above will be JavaScript, which will be inside of the default template constant. Next, we'll do something similar if they didn't specify Git. We'll just ask them if they want to initialize a Git repository or not, and the default for that is false. Now that we have our two questions to ask for the two missing parameters, we need to get the answers. So we'll set a constant of answers equal to await inquirer.prompt questions, and then that's going to return the answers that the user specifies. So we want to return our existing options plus the template, either the template that they specified inside of options or the answer that they gave us after the fact. And we'll do the same thing for git, either the options.git or the answers.git. Then we'll head down into our CLI and now we want to prompt for the missing options, passing in the options that we have so far. And finally, we need to make the function async. And then I think we forgot to add inquirer up here. So let's import inquirer from inquirer. And then we can head to the terminal and run create dash project blank and it's going to prompt us whether we want a javascript or typescript project and then it's going to ask us if we want a git repository or not and then it'll set the options accordingly now that we have the options for the user's project it's time to create a template we're going to use a couple of npm packages to help us out here we're going to use ncp to copy some template files over and we're going to use chalk to format the output using color we're going to put all of our core logic into a file called main.js inside of the source folder. So let's go there now. I'm gonna import the dependencies. We need chalk, fs, ncp, path, and promiseify for our code. Next, we'll promiseify the fs.access and ncp functions and store them as access and copy. We'll use access to check for read access of a file and we use copy to recursively copy our template file into the user's destination folder. Next, we'll create an async function called copy template files that takes in the options, and we'll use it to copy the template directory to the target directory without overwriting things. So we'll set clobber equal to false here. Next, we'll create the function that is going to create our user's bootstrap project. The first thing it's gonna do in here is specify a target directory. So we'll take the options we have so far, and we'll also specify the target directory. If they've passed in a target directory, then we'll use that. Otherwise, we'll use the process's current working directory, which will be the normal operation. Next, we'll set the template directory by using path.resolve. What we're looking for is from the current path name, two directories up, there's a folder called templates, and inside of that, there is a folder with the templates lowercase name, so either JavaScript or TypeScript lowercase. Using all of that inside of path.resolve, we'll be able to resolve the template directory to slash templates slash JavaScript or TypeScript. Once we have that, we can set the template directory inside of our options. Now that we have a template directory, we need to make sure that it actually exists. So we use access to try to read at that template directory. If it works great, we're good to go. If it doesn't, then we've got a major error. So inside of our catch block, we're just going to log out a console.error 
and exit the process because that's an invalid template name and there's absolutely nothing we can do with that. Assuming everything's okay, then we'll log out that we're copying the project files and we'll run copy template files, passing in the options. And then the project will be ready to go. So we'll console.log out that the project is ready and use chalk.green.bold to say done at the beginning of that line. And we'll return true from here. Now we need to actually create some files for our templates. So I'll head to the terminal here and we're going to create a templates directory and then change into the templates directory and make a JavaScript directory and a TypeScript directory. Inside of each one of these, I'm going to create a package.json and inside of each of them, I'm going to create a source directory. Then for each of the package.json's, I'm just gonna paste in some boilerplate package.json code. This one will have ESM. The other one will have the TypeScript module for the TypeScript project. Heading back to CLI.js, let's import the create project function from our main.js file. Then we'll head down inside of our CLI function and instead of console.log options, let's actually create the project by calling await create project, passing in our CLI options. Back in the terminal, I am going to create a sample project here by creating a new directory called test dir, and I'll change directories into it and run our create project script. I'll specify TypeScript as my template, and I'll run dash dash git, which won't do anything for now, but we'll get there in a second but you'll see that this did create the template correctly as we do have the correct package.json and a source folder. Now it's time to take everything we have and put it all together. We're gonna initialize the Git repository and install the packages. We're gonna use NPM packages for this. We're gonna use exec A to run Git, package install to use either yarn or NPM to install packages on the user's machine, and lister to provide a neat progress overview. So heading up here, we need a few uh, imports again. We're gonna import exec A from exec A, we're going to import lister from lister, and then we're going to import project install from package install. Next, we'll create a function called init git, which will take in our options that we've been working with so far. Inside of here, we're going to run exec a and specify that we want to run git with parameters of init, and we're going to use the current working directory as options.target directory which is the directory that the user is running our project from. If the result failed, then obviously we need to reject this promise and say that we failed to initialize git. Next, inside of our create project function, we're gonna replace the spot where we copied the template files with a lister list of tasks. So what we're gonna do inside of here is copy the project files, initialize git, and install the dependencies. So this is gonna take a list of objects that'll have titles and tasks. So the first one is going to be copy project files and we're gonna run copy template files, passing in the options. That'll copy our project files. Then the next one will be titled initialize git and the task that we'll run there is init git, passing in our options. And then we'll specify a third parameter for this one called enabled and enabled will check to see if options.git is set, and if it's not, then it won't run this task. Next, the third one is install dependencies. This one will have a title of install dependencies, and the task will be project install, taking in a current working directory of options.target directory. This one is going to specify a skip. So what, it, what this is going to do is skip this task, and let the user know that they can pass dash dash install to automatically install dependencies if they don't specify run install as an option. Otherwise, the skip will be undefined, so it'll get run. Now that we have all of our tasks specified, we can call await tasks.run to kick off the process of running these tasks, which will copy the project files, initialize git, and install the dependencies if the user wants that. So it's time to test this once again we'll remove our test directory and recreate it. And then I'll head into that directory and run our create-project, specifying that I want a TypeScript template, I do want a Git repository, and I would like the dependencies installed. We'll get that nice progress list, and once the dependencies are done, we can check the files, and we're good to go. There's our bootstrap. 